you. My goodness, I'm absolutely honored to be here in front of you today. Wow. There is a self-doubt pandemic. There is one in two women globally who actually feel self-doubt as opposed to feeling self-love. I mean, one in two women globally. Who actually recognizes self-doubt in themselves? Especially that imposter syndrome. Well, today I am honored to share with you how I want to show up in the world and make change in the world. When I was 12, I was in an English lesson. I was asked to read aloud in the class, which I did. And whilst I was reading, I stumbled on some words. The teacher laughed. The class followed. I wish the ground could have opened up and swallowed me. I wanted to disappear. And to make matters worse, my face was as red as a beetroot and he kept referring to that as well. Bloody hell, at that moment, I wanted to die. And actually, I lost that bold, curious and joyful Wendy. I decided that I was going to fit in. You see, because that Wendy... She wasn't smart enough, no. And that Wendy definitely wasn't enough. And that Wendy, in fact, she was just too much. Now that story might not resonate entirely with you in here today, ladies, particularly around your childhood or your education. But I wanna bring your attention to the patriarchal society that we live in, particularly the consumerism that we are constantly driven by. And I am saying today that that consumerism is actually driven and thrives off we females not feeling enough. I mean, just look at social media. I mean, it was only two months ago that I chose my first job. I know, look at the age of me. Because I was so gratefully given my roles, by the way, usually by our wonderful men. And I was creating their dreams for them, for sure. However, I really decided what perfect needed to be. And I tell you what, I was really good at it. I was an amazing actress. I even got awards, I know, amazing. But the reality was that behind closed doors, and some of my coaches are in here today, I was consumed with self-doubt. I was my worst enemy. In fact, I wouldn't even treat anybody the way I treated myself. And I really didn't know who I was. But what I did know was how to please everybody else. And I definitely was great at, you know, brushing myself down, stiff up her lip, putting the face on and getting out there. Moving on quickly, that was me. But on the 14th of November, 2021, the most horrific thing happened to me in my life. My courageously beautiful daughter made a very serious attempt to end her life. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. While sitting in the therapist room with her, I listened to her say, I don't feel anything. I'm not worth anything. In fact, I don't fit in. And the startling thing that came to my mind was, shit, that sounds like me. 
my goodness. I had been modeling to my daughter that invalidating your feelings, pleasing others and showing up quickly and not even recognizing where you were was a thing. It's what success looked like. Look at all the material things we had. This shit just got real for me. I had to think, what, how can we survive this? And the reality was that I couldn't love her any more than I did, but I needed to love me. That was a huge revelation, loving me. Who knew that was a thing? But you know, if I didn't do this, then how could my daughter be who she couldn't see? I mean, how do you love yourself? Surely that's selfish and conceited. Certainly in Britain, that's what we feel. But actually, it is not, ladies. I am here to say to you today that loving yourself is absolutely a radical act. I mean, I was on the bones of my ass here. Self-love is not ego. It's certainly not romantic. And it's not roses and bath bombs either, let me tell you. But what it is, is it's self-assurance that I know who I am and what I want. So what did I discover? Well, I wasn't perfect. I know, who could believe that? I was actually a flawless human, a very flawed, I was Freudian slip, a very flawed human being. And it was really important that I accepted that I was a flawed human being. And the irony of it was, by accepting that, my life has flourished. I mean, hello. I mean, what does it bring to me? Well, it brought a softness to me. And when I talk about softness, that was softness to myself, but also to others, and particularly my children. You know, you've heard that saying in the media, it's okay not to be okay. Well, let me tell you what my experience is there, is if my girl says, I can't make that exam tomorrow morning because I'm exhausted, but I'll try to make it in the afternoon, that's okay. She can. It's not the end of the world. It also brought for me expansion. I have expanded my learning, my knowledge, my inner work, but also my network and my job. I got promoted. Woohoo! Standing in my power. I mean, can you believe it with all that going on? And the other thing it brought me was connection. You know, connection to myself, to other humans and particularly to my children. You know, I told you it wasn't roses and bath bombs. There are days when I do invalidate their feelings. But the thing I do now is I know when I've done it. And I do go into the room and I'll say, I think I just invalidated your feelings there. And they go, you did. And I say, I know I'm pretty shit at this, am I? But I am learning. And they go, it's okay, mama, we love you. I mean, how amazing is that, to be that vulnerable and that transparent as a parent? I was also asked during this discovery was, what brings you joy, Wendy? Now, that's easy, isn't it? No, it's not. Now, I can tell you what brought me happiness, because, of course, I was buying lots of stuff in that consumer world to try and make myself happy for all the five minutes. But actually... What brought me joy? Hmm, that took a lot of deep work. 
And I had to dig deep. Three and a half weeks, actually, it took me to find the remembering, the experience when I felt joy. And to my surprise, I'd actually been doing this in my day job. When you become conscious, it's amazing. I love nothing more than bringing a whole gang of customers into a room from chief execs to operators and igniting them to show up and orchestrating them to create their magic in that room. It is amazing. And that's what brought me joy. I will say accepting yourself as a flawed human being is a great start today, ladies. We can choose to love ourselves right now, right here as we are, because we can. It's your personal choice and your private discovery. But it's not a one and done, it's every day. You have to set your intention every day to love yourself. Just like brushing your teeth. I mean, it's for you, done by you, owned by you, and it doesn't cost anything. That's the joy in this. It's available to everybody who wants to do this. Not just those with the big bank balances. So it's wonderful. And as a self-love activist, I'm standing here today and I want to share the secret of how to love yourself. And I've established the Ohana Foundation and I have a dream. And that dream is that I will have 5 million women worldwide across 33 countries practicing self-love on a daily basis, standing in their power and sitting at their rightful place that they want to sit at at the table. They will also be taking this into their daily lives and amplifying that love. And I'm calling for all of you here today and women across the world to rise up with self-love, especially in a society that promotes self-doubt and insecurity. Let's take an action today. Loving yourself because you can, just as you are. And being proud of who you are is an act of social and political activism. Thank you. Thank you.